Hello everyone. First off, I would like to apologize yet again for the lack of thumbnails. Hopefully what I just said is dated and I have fixed since fixed that and put a thumbnail. If not, I'm sorry. But welcome to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Now dubbed by Disney Legends or Lucasfilm, whatever. The new Lucasfilm. Today, we have the finale. Oh, it's not the finale to the series, but it's finale to the particular storyline that was going on in the X-Wing Rogue Squadron series. In fact, the next book is even written by Michael Stackpole. It's written by someone else. But this is X-Wing Rogue Squadron The Back to War. Now, I'm, I'm going to get into spoilers. It's just going to happen. We're the fourth book in, in a series. If you were already interested, you probably have already bought them. If you wanted just a summary of the story, well, if you go to a store, which you're probably not doing right now, you could read the back of the book with a summary. If you went to the library, which you're probably not doing right now because of what's going on right now, You'd look at the back of it. But if you're going online to get them, like most people are probably doing because of stuff that's going on, even still, it usually has a summary right there. So I'm not going to give you a summary. Here's the thing. I've now read all four of these, and I can say without a shadow of a doubt, the X-Wing Rogue Squadron, at least the first four books, which is his own storyline, is fantastic, wonderful, amazing, and is A-tier quality, Better than the, than the Han Solo trilogy by A.C. Crispin and worth your time and money. If you don't have it and you're a Star Wars fan, hell, you're a Star Wars Legends fan. I don't know, that was backwards. If you're a Star Wars Legends fan, you need this. You need at least the first four. You need these in your life. These are so, so good. And if you're just a Star Wars fan, in general, these books deserve your money. Michael Stackpole deserves your money. If you got nothing to do during this quarantine, or you got work, but then you come home and you're like, I don't know what to do. I've already watched TV. You know, video games can only do that for so long. Actually, no squad. It is literally one of my favorite series of all time. Is is at least the first four has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Spicy means everywhere. Delish. Top tier. That was gross. I'm using a pen that I used to take to school and not, so that's kind of gross. Back when I was still in school. Anyway. Um, my first note. Myrex, Myrex, however you say that, and Cornhorn are great. Together. As, 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 a, as a couple. I, I love them. Um, I love them, I love them, I love them. Um, you know, Han and Leia will always be number one. I haven't seen Luke and Mara, so I can't speak for them yet. But right now it's Han and Leia, and then it's these two. I absolutely love them together. Ah, oh, I can't say praises about it enough. Oh, Horn meets Myrax's, or Myrax's, whatever, Myrax's dad, and that entire scene was amazing. Also, Booster, which is uh, Myrax's dad's name, has now become one of my favorite Star Wars characters of all time. I'm going to say that right now, without even having read everything yet. One of my favorites. Not my, not my favorite. One of my favorites. He is hilarious and amazing. I also wrote down, there's a part where it talks about where um, Luke left Cornhorn some Jedi reading material. Um, and so he's been, you know, reading up on that. <laughs> and my next note is Idiot Horn. Because he tries to use a Jedi mind trick on a stormtrooper. And it doesn't go well. 
you know, it's weird. I don't want to compare anything to Disney too much because I want to stay positive. Um, but with the sequel trilogy, I thought about Ray doing that in uh, episode seven. But the difference with him and her is, uh, first off, it didn't work. <laughs> and secondly, he had Jedi reading material, so he could actually learn about it. Whereas, um, uh, Ray did not. She, she had no way of knowing that that was even a thing she could do. Because if, if it was following continuity, it would know that from the original trilogy that Jedi were basically, you know, extinct. Oh my gosh, you probably heard that. I'm so sorry. Again, on my phone, not much I can do. Uh, but most people don't even believe that Jedi even existed anymore. Some of them do. Uh, you know, I mean... Uh, Han knew they existed, but he didn't believe in the, the Force aspect of it. So, you know, by episode 7, it'd be even worse. Um, especially since Luke failed at rebuilding the Jedi Order. So, you'd think that she wouldn't be able to do that. But nope, she can. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to get off that. Um, I wrote down that there's a part where um, Yasani Isgard or whatever, she orders family slaughtered for the failure of a officer. Like Darth Vader would choke out someone and kill them, break their neck. If they messed up. He wouldn't, I mean, he probably has, but he doesn't usually just first off go after the family. Um, which is where I really started hating her. Like, before, you know, she's the bad guy. So you can't like her. But I never hated her. This is where I, like, hated her. I also wrote that... I don't know, she kind of... In this book, at least, she lost some of the... Uh, coolness that I thought she had before. Um, I don't know, in this one, she just felt like a typical villain. She didn't... I don't know. She was never super compelling, because she never had that much... Not screen time, because it's a book, but... She never had that much time, um, but the time she did have, she she came off as intimidating and uh, and fascinating to me. And this one, I don't know, she just came off as a typical villain. And I know she was basically the same as she was in previous books, but I don't know this. The just I don't know the family slaughtering just put me off a bit. She also really really hates Antilles in this book. Like she just wants him dead. And the villains even address this. I will, That is another note. The villains agree. Like, they think that Isgard's going crazy. Like, they don't want to listen to her anymore. So, maybe that was the point. But uh, She's not dead. She made it out. Spoilers. But, you know, I already said spoilers. So, Cornhorn and Booster, they fight. Um, they, they get into a fight. And Wedge talks to both of them uh, afterwards, and that whole speech is wonderful. Like, you know, Wedge sticking up for, you know, Cornhorn, because he has saved them on numerous occasions, and he's done a lot for them and been selfless. Um, it's just good to see him be a good friend and back him up. But at the same time, you know, he tells Horn that he needs to have some perspective. Um, and, I, and I like that whole scene, because... You know, Horn's like, you know, my father might have been your enemy, but I'm not your enemy. And I'm not going to be your enemy. And that's going to be it. You know, you can read it if you want to know, like, what, exactly what he said. But I enjoyed that immensely. Yes. Um, my next note. Sorry, just reading it. Um, so next note was that, um, again, I've been spoiling it. But if for some reason you're still reading and, and you haven't read this before... Please go read it. You're doing yourself a disservice. Please, please, please go read it. Because I'm going to spoil something that, that, that made me cry. So, just go read it. Okay? Go read it. It wasn't sad crying, but it was. Um, Horn asked Marax to marry him. Um, and, you know, going through the EU, the first time I cried, not even... I didn't, there's nothing super crazy about it. I don't know, it was just the way the dialogue was written. I don't know. I love them so much. They, <laughs> I was, I had tears um, for like at least a solid like minute or two. 
after I read that. I just, I just, I just stopped because I was, I was really happy for these fake people that don't exist. Um, so yeah, that made me really happy. So that's a, this is a, my favorite book in the, in the, in the quadruple movies or books. Cause just, just cause of that. Um, so of course, Rogue Squadron, well, not Rogue Squadron now, because they're technically defected from the New Republic. They win. They succeed in almost every way, shape, and form, though Iskar gets away, um, and the New Republic gets a new Star Destroyer, though apparently it's going to be stripped of its, uh, of it, of its, uh, weapons for another ship, for a booster, which is a, <laughs> another thing. It's a more paraphrase, an actual, like, direct quote by Booster when they're discussing, like, who's going to get the ship or not. Um, he, like, you know, tells Corn Horn that he had a stupid idea or whatever. And Myrex slaps um, his shoulder and is like, you can't speak like that to my fiance. <laughs> and then he's like, this guy wants to take away my ship. And he wants to get rid of my daughter. Uh, that, this is the first time in any one of these books where I audibly, like, out loud, like, usually, like, like oh, that's funny. You know, like, in my head. Um, like, uh, when I read Labyrinth of Eel, for example, there was a couple times where they were, you know, Anakin and Obi-Wan were talking. And it, you know, I was like, ha, that's cute, that's funny. But this one actually, like, made me, like, I laughed out loud. Um, when I, when I read that, <laughs> it's funny. Um, uh, all right, and they got their positions back, so, but they basically got everything. They won, they liberated a the planet, they, 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 they stopped, um, the Star Destroyer. Iskar got away, but she's still lost in, 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 in the, the back of war, as the book's titled, um. But they all got their positions back in Rogue Squadron. They're all part of the Republic again. So, also, uh, I'll, I'll get to that before I, um, <laughs> before the end of the book, before Wedge gives his big final speech of the book. Um, in between that, Wedge married Horn and and Myrax. So I'm probably butchering the names. Please forgive me, but. Um, he married them. They're, they're, they're going to have a formal, like, actual, like, ceremony. But they just wanted to tie the knot before uh, Booster could complain about it. <laughs> so they're married now, which just makes me even more happy because it's, it's what I want for them. Uh, I swear, if she dies in any of these books, if she dies, I'm going to cry so hard. She better not die. She better not. Um, Wedge gives a final speech um, during the end of the book, and the entire speech is wonderful. This is another reason why Wedge has just become one of my favorite Star Wars characters. He's such a caring and devoted you know, leader and friend, and, you know, he, he references, like, you know, I used to be young, you know, and me and my friends were, were ready for anything, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, don't, I'm not saying it word for word, you know, before the Battle of Yavin, um, and I lost a lot of those friends, and, but I have you guys now, and, you know, while people may never remember this, these battles as important as when the Death Star blew up, it still matters, and you guys matter, and basically I love you guys, even though it's not what he said, but it's, it's basically the vibe, and these books have now taken a special place in my heart. I think out of everything I've read out of the EU, it's, objectively, I still think, I mean, it's subjective. But I think the Darth Bane trilogy and Darth Plagueis has still not been beaten in terms of writing. But in terms of my heart and things that have personally touched me in the EU so far, Rogue Squadron has captured my heart. 
they have me. I'm hooked. I love it. I love them. I love these. I love Michael Stackpole. Phenomenal writer. Thank you for these books. You know, I know these books are kind of older. And I don't know how often you get thanks for them. And, you know, if I had all the money in the world, because right now I'm trying to go through the entire EU, I would go check out your other stuff. Because you know what? I have fallen in love with these characters so much and fallen in love with the with with, with these stories so much. Just of just of Rogue Squadron that I would be willing to see what else you have to offer in terms of other books that are originals of yours or of other things that you've done. Because I'm that devoted and, and, and eventually I will get around to seeing what else you have to offer in terms of writing and other books that you've written. And I will check them out at some point. Because you won me over. Not only am I a fan of the X-Wing Rogue Squadron series, I'm a fan of Michael Stackpole. And I want to see what else he has to offer because he is a phenomenal writer. Phenomenal. But anyway, that's about it. Fun. Fun notes. Loved it. And I don't know what else to say. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Fantastic. Great. Grand. Extraordinary. One of my favorite uh, books I've ever read, ever. You know, over Harry Potter. Lord of the Rings. Uh, all right. No, you know what? I don't want to stick into it. More than Lord of the Rings. More than Percy Jackson. And those are stuff that I grew up with. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Or series. And there's still more to come. Though, I don't know. Because it's not written by Michael Stackpole. So we'll see how, how that goes. Because we have Ray Squadron. We have uh, Iron Fist. And we have Solo Command. And Isgard's Revenge, but that comes after the Thrawn trilogy, so. I don't know how that's going to be. But, and I don't know if it's going to be as good as these four books. It might not be. That's okay. But, this, this has reinvigorated me to continue on going with the EU. Because, man, Allegiance and Choices of One, man, did that test my resolve. Because I, I... Several times I wanted to just stop reading and do anything else. But I stuck through it because I knew that there would be amazing stories like these in the expanding universe to get to. And I couldn't let two mediocre, and I'm sorry, my opinion, mediocre books get in the way of me enjoying other stuff like this. And I'm so happy that I stuck through because this has been incredible. Anyway, I'm, do I'm done gushing. It's, I love it. And... Um, if you've already read this, I mean, if you're sticking through already, you've probably read these and you just want to see what somebody else thought. I love these. I love them a lot. And when, when I have my own place and I have my own bookshelf, you can bet that I don't care if I already have a Kindle version of it. I'm getting in a physical copy of all of these, <laughs> at least the first four. Um, but anyway, man, sorry. I, 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 just, I had such a good time. But um, next up we got uh, Race Squadron. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I hope you'll join me then. Um, another exciting tale through the expanding universe. And I can't wait to just keep diving in. See you next time.